okay, I don't really have a lot to say about the very first one. I really like the skeleton. I think that's a really great fight. It's just such a creepy moment when it, you know, gets up and comes at you. Also because it's not the first time you see the skeleton. It's kind of like, is there something about that skeleton? I don't feel quite... Okay, maybe there isn't. And then you get back to that area, you know, you're ready to complete that level, and it just gets up and starts attacking you. And I love that it'll actually reassemble itself if you do destroy it. I also really like the mouse that, you know, the princess sends out in one of the intermissions. And then, you know, the young man, soon to be the prince, is standing there. He's made his way back through the three choppers. And then you're just there and you're like, oh no, no. What did I do wrong? Why isn't the door open? Am I going to have to do this all over again? And you're just standing there, and then suddenly the mouse just comes, opens the door for you, and, you know, and you can go on, you can complete the level, you did it all right, you know, and not enough good can be said about that very last level. I mean, just, you know, invisible tiles, a fight against the vizier himself, who's a pretty tough guy himself. I also both love and hate that big fat guard, because he is so tough. You know, he'll wait for you to attack, and you know, parry your attack, then attack you, parry your attack, then attack you. You really, really have to fight hard, and if he shoves you back far enough, you'll go through that tile on the floor, and have to start that over. That's it for the original Prince of Persia from 1989, moving on to Prince of Persia 2, The Shadow and the Flame. I do think it's pretty cool that spot where, I think it's in the caves, you're chased by all of these skeletons and you have to make it all the way through and then the last door will close and you made it out alive. But other than that, I do think that this one maybe overused the skeletons a little bit. That fight on the rickety bridge, ugh, irritating, frustrating, but also pretty satisfying to complete. And after it, you just want to smack the prince over the head for dropping his sword. It is kind of cool getting to fry the Grand Vizier, but it is a bit of an easy ending fight, if you can call it that. You basically just have to hurry and make it to the spot where you can fire at him before he is already running away from there and then, and then and the whole realm of the mind thing is really weird I really would be interested in a story that follows up on this ending you know with that nasty old who we kinda get the impression was responsible for slaughtering his old people you know we find out he was a prince before but then his people and their realm was completely laid to waste and it seems like it was her fault and now she's got him in her sights again so to speak you know in the crystal ball but then the third one didn't follow up on that in spite of all the nostalgia in it and now they seem to be going in completely different directions that's it for Prince of Persia 2 The Shadow and the Flame moving on to Prince of Persia 3D I like how this one to an extent keeps up the realism and the brutal nature of the first and second games. I mean, granted there's no blood when your head is lopped off, but there's that one cutscene where the princess tricks Rugnor and chops off his arm, and the next time we see him he has a big metal arm. And at the very end, because she refuses to marry him, he's gonna crush her between gears. That's brutal, man. That is hardcore. That really feels like the kind of thing they'd think of back then, you know, with all the racks and torture instruments. I also just think it's really, really chilling that it seriously shows you, no, she died, and then Rugnor chops your head off if you don't make it in time. Moving on to Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. That sword near the end is it maybe overkill? You know, it just takes out enemies in a single blow, provided you get a good slash at them and not just nick them. Then again, it kind of makes me feel like Blade when I do that. You know, 
in that first scene in the original movie, you know, at the club where he just takes vampires out in the dozens. Then again, the entire game kind of makes me feel like that because I'm always staking enemies after taking them out. And to some extent, the other two games do as well. Emulate the feeling. Make me feel like I'm Blade. Isn't it nice of Farrah to make such a romantic image landing? I mean, her head should be shattered. You know, her skull and blood everywhere, like in the original 1989 game. I also kind of like how the love story isn't just straightforward and regular, you know, the mysterious things she says a couple of times, you know, especially in the Hall of Knowledge, or what it's called, you know, this isn't that, you know, almost as if she's remembering something from an earlier time they've done this together. It is a little silly with the thing at the very end with Kakalukio, and she's all like shocked because he knew the thing that he told me I told him. Moving on to Warrior Within. I really can't stand that huge metal dude. I mean, you fight him like five times. I wish I was exaggerating. Five times, count him. I think it's five. I mean, once, fine. Two, okay, but you're kind of pushing it. Three is the definite cutoff point. And above that is just abusive. Yes, he's easy. I mean, once you get onto his back, it's just so easy from there. You know, just slow down time and bang on his head a bunch of times. You know, you can do it in a single attempt. You don't have to get up onto his back more than the one time. It's just, what's the point? On the other hand, I quite like that bird. I really liked seeing that in the trailer. and. I thought I was going to get to fight that more. There was only the one fight, and it was so similar to the Metal Dude fight. I don't know, maybe they just really fell in love with this idea of slashing at someone's legs and feet. I also expected to fight Shadi more than only the two times. Maybe it was because when I played the demo, it had that trailer at the end that not only showed you fighting the Metal Dude in spite of the fact that Getting that trailer meant you had just defeated the Metal Dude in the demo, anyway. It also showed what I thought was Shadi and you fighting on a beam. Of course, that turned out to be the Demonatrices, but... I don't know, it also just seemed like they were building her up, and then you kill her... You know, you fight her twice in the first hour or so of playing the game, and that's it, you know? After that, she's just gone. She dies the second time. Don't you just love the prince's eyes the first time he sees the sand wraith, you know, right before interrupting the fight between Shadi and Kailina? You know, his eyes were just like... Okay. Oh well, I'll just move on. I have no clue what I just witnessed. After you activate the first tower, Kailina will warn you that the hourglass is now half empty. Me? I like to think of it as half full. Don't you just love how when Kailina and the prince are talking about, you know, if he can change the timeline. You know, he asks in his most Lothario voice, did you think I would succeed? And she just flatly responds, no. Ouch. Shot down. Obviously, and without a doubt, according to Jim, is an utterly reprehensible show. However, I do hope that you'll forgive me for quoting it just this once. You know when both locks come open on the door when you've activated both towers. It opens in! Seriously, could he not just have taken a battering ram to the door or something? Those locks wouldn't have prevented the door from opening. I mean, unless the mechanism is just linked somehow, but the idea of that kind of lock is that you put it so that it blocks the door from being opened. Otherwise, there's no point. It is a little lame how a couple of the cinematics where the Dahaka gets you, he just kind of throws you away, throws you into something. I really hate when they have to resort to that to keep the enemy seeming powerful.